Hi, I'm Judy Godier, and I am super excited to be part of E.E. E. Shank's Spring Trends. And I want to introduce you to my new tool, the three-in-one simple square templates from CNT Publishing. Hi, I'm Judy Godier, and I'm an author for CNT Publishing. I am the author of Quilts for Scrap Lovers, Rainbow Quilts for Scrap Lovers, and Sensational Quilts for Scrap Lovers. And now, Quilt as You Go for Scrap Lovers. So I've got three books about scrap quilting and CNT Publishing calls me the Scrap Whisperer. So how I accomplish all these scrap quilts is by cutting them only into three sizes. My scraps get cut down into a three and a half, a four and a half, or a five and a half inch square. Sometimes all within the same quilt, sometimes only using a couple, but it's always those same sizes of squares every single time. So in the past, I used three separate templates, a three and a half, a four and a half, and a five and a half inch square to cut down my scraps. But I now have a new tool. It is a all-in-one three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half inch acrylic template tool. And I'm going to show you how to use this tool to make lots and lots of different fast and simple cuts to get your scrap quilting done efficiently and without math. So here are some of my scrap pieces. Now, most of my scraps tend to be left over from cutting uh, umbrellas, from cutting out garments, from cutting out or bolt ends of things because I'm also a shop owner of a quilt, quilt shop. So I have a lot of bolt ends and pieces left over. But like I said, many, many of them, the majority of them are left over from cutting curves or from cutting garments. So most of the quilts start out in my books with cutting five and a half inch squares, not five inch squares, but five and a half inch squares. It's really important that you have um, that extra half an inch. If you do run into having to do any math, it just complicates things so much more if you don't have that extra half an inch calculated in. So I'm going to cut these scraps into five and a half inch squares. See how nicely it works to have a template to cut like that. So here I have two of one print and two of a coordinating print. So they're all cut into half, five and a half inch squares. And the nice thing is, is that with each book, there's another new cutting technique that comes out. And these are all, like I said, fast and simple mathless cutting techniques using this tool, okay? So I have a stack of four, two of one print, two of another print. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to find my lot, my edge here and the edge of the three and a half inch square. All right, so there, that's the quarter inch line. I'll move it over here a little bit. That's the quarter inch line, and this is the edge of the five and a half. So that means that that's two inches right there. So I'm going to put my edge of my three and a half inch square down. Make sure that your stack of fabrics is nice and neatly aligned. And I am going to cut along the edge of the five and a half inch squares. And this technique, all these techniques are shown in the books. So now I have two rectangles. Now I'm gonna take my three and a half inch square and I'm going to lay it down right here, lined up nice and neatly, neatly aligned with the edges of my fabric. And I'm going to cut across the top of that. Okay, so now all your cutting for this block is done. Now this block is a basic block that gets used over and over in all of the books, but the layouts each time can be much different. So that's what's so fun and versatile about this block. There are so many different blocks that you can do with just this cutting technique. So we're alternating the lights and the darks here, okay? And we're not sewing anything together yet, but now we're going to Sew a dark rectangle to a lighter square with a quarter inch seam. And we're gonna do that for each one of these, all right? We're gonna chain piece those so that we're not wasting any thread. All right, now that's cute in and of itself, but we're gonna take it another step. We're going to, after these have been sewn a quarter inch, you've shortened each one of these up by a half an inch, right? So there's gonna be a little bit of trimming involved. So we're going to stitch the long rectangles now onto their corresponding units like that with a quarter inch seam. 
and then it gets sewn together as a four patch. That's just how fast and easy this block is. Oops, excuse my fingers there. That's just how fast and easy this block is. And this block looks completely different when it's turned on point, or if you take this section out and this section out, leave this and put two solid squares in here and in here, and there's just, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many fun, creative ways to play with this, this block. Let me show you some more. So what if you wanted to cut a four and a half inch square out of a piece of fabric that was a scrap? So you would just lay your template on that piece of fabric. You might have to square the edges of the fabric or straighten the edges of the fabric up first. And you're going to cut, there's the blue lines, where the four and a half inch would be. And you're going to turn it this way. So now you have a four and a half inch square and you can cut out a four and a half inch square. This leaves it so that your entire scrap, the rest of your scrap, is not dedicated to having one large chunk taken out of it. If you would have cut a four and a half inch strip out of this scrap, the whole rest of the scrap would have been committed to that four and a half inches. Now, if I wanted to go back and cut a five and a half inch square, I still can do that. That's the beauty of using an acrylic template for one thing, but the beauty of using this acrylic template. So now I have a four and a half inch square. Let's just see what kinds of fun things we can do with four and a half inch squares. Okay, I have a four and a half inch square and I have a big chunk of something left over that I use to cut bias binding, all right? So I want to cut a five and a half inch square out of that. So I'm going to cut a piece that is five and a half inches by five and a half inches and I have a four and a half inch square. What kind of fun things can we do with this? Well, I'm going to cut my five and a half inch square on the diagonal. And then I'm going to cut this one on the diagonal twice. Now remember in these three books, there are all kinds of fun blocks made just like this with no math involved just some really fun, fast cutting techniques. I'm gonna cut this one twice. All right, now I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to crease it. Whether you use one of those little brayers or whether you use your iron, you just have to be careful because this is a bias edge. So those of us with lots of experience know that we're not gonna use our iron like a rolling pin. Um, for the young gals out there that might have just started sewing, you just got to gently, gently work with your pieces so that you don't distort them. Now I have a crease in this. I'm going to take my three, my diagonal line here, okay, and I'm going to put this along that crease, right along the spot where I made the crease, and I'm going to cut off these little dog ears. Now these you can save for my snippets quilt that's in quilt for scrap love, quilts for scrap lovers. Okay, put that aside. We're going to save those. And now I'm going to stitch this to this and this to this. All right. After those get stitched together, you can see you've got this nice unit here that's half of a triangle or a half half square triangle kind of unit. And then with right sides together, you're going to put this one onto this, all right? And then you're going to square it down. You're going to use the four and a half inch and you're going to square it down and you'll have a very interesting block that you can lay out in lots of different ways. Let me show you. <clears throat> okay, so now I have my unit right here all nice and neatly sewn together with just those two sizes, the four and a half and the five and a half inch and just that magical cutting technique. And I wanna square this up to four and a half inches. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to put something white behind here so it's easier to see. I'm going to take my diagonal line from my four and a half inch square, which is blue. You can see that the four and a half inch square is blue, my diagonal line. And then this is the main diagonal line that runs through the entire block. So the crosshairs right there are going to be put right in the center of this block, right? So I am going to now, now that I know that I'm central, I am going to trim one side here and here. Oops. 
It helps to also have little sticky dots that you can put on the backs of these, just like any acrylic template to keep them from sliding, all right? Now I am going to turn this, and again, I'm going to have my crosshairs where they need to be, here and here, and it doesn't matter that this is somewhat narrower and somewhat wider on this side. This is the center, this is where you want that to be, okay? Because this is what happens on lots of blocks in lots of different sewing situations where you don't trust your um, tool or you don't put your tool central along the diagonal line. I've seen this happen many, many times with people and then they cut something wrong because they, they see that these two edges are not the same. And that's the whole reason that you are squaring something up is because they're not the same, right? Because while we when we sew, we stretch, we pull, fabrics behave differently, fabrics play differently. So we're gonna trust our acrylic template, we're gonna trust our tool. And now you have the perfect block that's four and a half inches by four and a half inches. This particular block can be laid out in so, so many different ways. It's absolutely amazing the uses you will find for this block. Now. The other two that we cut from this, we're not going to throw those away either. You can either use them for my snippets quilt, or you can make another one of these blocks using these two as well. Now, the next one that I want to show you is made extra fun by the fact that I'm using stripes. Again, this is a piece that I had left over after cutting a bias binding. A lot of times you don't really know what to do with these pieces because you've got this giant bias piece cut off, but you've got a large chunk left over. So I'm going to cut three five and a half inch squares out of this piece of fabric. Okay, I have three pairs of fabric here. I have three of the striped fabric, like I showed you initially. I have three pieces of a Kona sheen that was left over from a Christmas tree skirt that I had made. And I have paired them together, right sides together, and made a mark at the upper left and the lower right, okay? Now, I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to cut on a diagonal where I'm just touching those two little hash marks that I made. And I'm going to keep them together. And I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to make a quarter inch seam along this long straight edge here, along this long straight edge. Not even gonna take them apart, I'm gonna leave them together so that I can chain piece. And this is just using scraps and my acrylic template. Okay, now I have stitched all of these right sides together along that long edge, and I've pressed my seam allowances open so that when I lay them out, and I'm going to stitch this seam right here, and I'm going to put all of them together, stitching those seams, you will have a hexagon a perfect hexagon. Now, you will then have this opening in the center and I use felted wool to cut a circle or you can make a heart or another hexagon and you applique it using your favorite applique technique. And that is just another really fun example of one of the quilts that are in the books and the use of this wonderful acrylic template, which cuts three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half inch squares. Okay, so you may say to yourself, well, what do I need another ruler for? I've got so many rulers that I don't use and I can't remember how to use them. This is not a ruler, it is a square. It is a square with three squares all together in one template in which you have a myriad of patterns with combinations of using these three, which will eliminate math for you and we'll have you cutting up your scraps in no time. You'll probably find that you leave it right next to your sewing machine and cut your scraps up into five and a half inch squares so that you can use them down the road for tons and tons of quilts in Quilts for Scrap Lovers, 
Rainbow Quilts for Scrap Lovers, Sensational Quilts for Scrap Lovers, and coming out within the next week is Quilt As You Go for Scrap Lovers. You will be thrilled at this tool. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope that I have helped you to come up with some great ideas for using those piles and piles of scraps that are in your sewing room.